like a year later, find myself at Chelsea. Mm. Like, Ancelotti's the one who's come in and signed me. That team was ridiculous. Yeah, as well. and it's like Anelka was still there. I'm that seeing time like ago. Anelka, Drogba, Frank. Like John Terry, I'm seeing stars. That's that. Where I'm like, this is this is stupid. <laughs> People, it's the One Devotion. You're now watching the Daily Devotion podcast, the space where we connect and engage with creators from various industries to share insights on their journey so far. Last two, two, two bosses in the room right now. <laughs> two, 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 two. Serious bosses in the game. Um, two excellent professionals in their own right. Um, chef made, first and foremost. We've got former Chelsea, Doncaster Rovers, Fleetwood Town, an England youth team player in Alex Kwamia. That's the one. What are you saying, fam? I'm good, bro. How are yeah. you? Bless, bless, bless. Give thanks, Quincho. And we've got former Sheffield Wednesday youth player and semi pro in Keenan McKenzie Group. What a day, what a day, what a day. <laughs> what a day, what a day, what a day. <laughs> Say, lads, you good? Good, man. Good, yeah. good. Yeah, nice, nice. Thanks, Quinchu, still. Um, so this is what it is. All things football, straight in. What does it actually take to actually be that elite player? Obviously, we've all grew up and wanted to be like your or Ronaldo's, or as of late, you've got your Messi's. Your um, Lewandowski's, but as players who's played in that environment, what does it actually take to be that that elite? Straight in. I've been asked this a couple of times, and how I'd explain it is, it starts from early. Okay. People think it's it's just an overnight thing, or it takes a bit of luck, I'll okay. admit. But also, it takes hard work. Like you gotta. My dad had me out in the garden, doing drills when I was like five, do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, that was my bread and butter, like mm. through everything, he made it so I could be what I am today and okay. the player that I am today. And I think you just gotta be willing to live, breathe football. Like even, even if you're not playing, you're watching it. Mm. Or even if you're not watching it, you're thinking about it. Yeah. So it's it's all about how much work you put in. And I think Ronaldo's the perfect example of mm. you get what you put into it. You know what I mean? Like mm. he he's a beast. He's a machine. He is. So I think you just gotta put put the work in. You get out what you put in. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. And I yeah. think yeah. if yeah. you wanna be the best of the best, you've got to put it's gotta be your life. It's that gotta working. be your life where you can't just be on and off and mm, you know mm. be wanting to go to parties and stuff like that mm, you're like mm. you gotta sacrifice mm, mm, mm. yeah it's true i rate that as well because it shows that like it takes a mentality 100 percent. but from a very early stage as you're saying like man's thinking about it if you're not thinking about it you're playing it if you're not playing it you're dreaming about it you live breathing shit football exactly. pretty much exactly um you obviously touched upon your dad yeah. um, being a massive influence, obviously coming from a a, a very successful footballing family in the Kwamias. Your dad, um, he's fully fledged. Your uncle, yeah. he's fully fledged. It's Arsenal player, former Arsenal player. Um, did you feel like you was preordained to make it then? Like it was written for you just because you had that kind of foundation of knowledge, experience, you know, drive, exactly what it looks like. I feel like I got a head start. Yeah. And I feel yeah. like I I wanted to do that because they did it. And okay. that's how I want my kids to, I take my kids to my games because my little boy wasn't interested in football until he started coming to my games. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, daddy, I want to be a footballer like you. Mm. So I think that's how I got it from my my old man was he was just football all the time like mm. come here watch this game watch, watch the movement watch all this and he's like all right cool and I think growing up with that and having that kind of background definitely helped me and I wanted to be the person that. Everyone, when I was coming up, was like, oh, your uncle's Chris yeah, and your dad's yeah. Andy and mm. yeah, blah, blah, blah. I wanted mm. to be like, 
nah, I'm Alex. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've been here. I, I've, yeah. I went to Chelsea. I've done all that. So it's nice to be yeah. able to carve out yeah, your own kind yeah. of own kind of narrative to yeah, say, yeah, definitely. I'm from this, but I produced this myself. Yeah, I put the hours in. Like I've got cousins that wanted to obviously play football and mm. obviously didn't didn't make it, and it's like, well, I put the work in. Do you know mm. what I mean? So I mm. got there. Mm. I'm I'm doing well, so I'm happy so, about that. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, bless. You got yourself on. Like obviously, I feel like when you say you had to carve out your own path, I think that's important because it's very easy to say, to ride off the back of a flipping a surname. You get me on to say, well, he's my family or we're from this background. Like you actually had to put the work in yeah, yourself. Definitely. Um, definitely. And that's commendable. Uh, yeah, I feel like you weren't just all football though, where I think you had like some record for sprinting or some yeah, sort of mad so. athletics. <laughs> so, so my nana so, used to run for Jamaica. What? And um, What? Yeah. Shelly Ann, <laughs> three years up. <laughs> Yo, this is, serious guy. Shelly yeah, this is a mad. So, can you remember we used to go to the school things? Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. Um, <laughs> it was Dwayne's, Dwayne's uh, brother, Oh, phase on. F- phase on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I went yeah. to a running a running day one day. Obviously, I knew I was quick, but yeah, we yeah, went yeah. and I just blew people out the out the water. And phase on was like, yo, like we do some training, like you come down. And I was like, all okay. right, cool, like whatever. My dad was like, yeah, but you can do it, but just don't let it affect your football. Like I'll, mm. he was like, because my dad, my dad's a fitness coach now. Okay. So he was like, I'll train you, yeah. but just don't let it affect your football. football. I used to go down and then realize that. I was rapid. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I was rapid. Like okay. I hold, held like the quickest hundred meter time, two hundred meter time, or four hundred meter time, like all time. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. For yeah, English yeah. people, for your age as well. Like yeah, that age so group, I think it was like ten point something. Ten point nine eight when I was like fourteen. Incredible or pace. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. Ninety nine pace on flipping on FIFA. It was stupid. <laughs> it was stupid. So, stupid. so yeah, from them track days it just got bigger and bigger where to the point where I was going to like national events and I was yeah. winning and then I got pegged to go to the Commonwealth when I was like 15. Serious. And from that, I just ended up, I had to make a choice at the end of the day when it came yeah. to it yeah. because athletics was getting serious yeah. and football, I just, Rotherham had just missed my day um, to, to basically sign me on like a pro deal or like okay. a school board deal. So I had loads of clubs come in for me. So I ended up going like Chelsea, Arsenal, Tottenham, Man U, Man City, and- Bun Tottenham. They all offered me deals. <laughs> yeah, they all offered me deals. But Chelsea offered me like a, I think it was a six or seven year deal. And I was just like, they were like, you can continue doing athletics, but really, it's long. You got a seven year deal at yeah, Chelsea. Chelsea like, you ain't doing mad. athletics. Yeah. It's so mad. that just that just got put to the side and then football started to take a, like a serious, like a, a real serious, serious turn. Like So from obviously being obviously very athletic, very say versatile, obviously, we're all black boy, we can, you know, run, jump. Mm. Not so about swim too tough, do you know what I mean? <laughs> but run, jump play a range of sports. Um, obviously, it was always football. So what was that transition like then from being at Rotherham to then Chelsea, where at that age, how old were you, like? 14. 14. Yeah. The relocating, it's a different club. This is a super club now. Yeah, exactly. So I think what was that like? It was weird because I remember being in the car with my old man and we were going on, on the way to training with to go to Rotherham. Mm. And he there was something on the radio about um, basically Chelsea couldn't go into the transfer window because of something to do with Gail Kakua. Mm. So we were like, oh, they won't be making any signings, mm. like joking Mocking about it. it. <laughs> and then like a year later, I find myself at Chelsea, mm. like Ancelotti's the one who's come in and signed me. That team was ridiculous. Yeah, well. and it's like- Anelka was still there I'm that seeing time. I'm seeing like Anelka, Drogba, Frank, like John Terry, I'm seeing stars. That's that. Where I'm like, this is this is stupid. <laughs> so, I'm used to seeing these men on the telly. Yeah, exactly. And I'm in essence in the environment. Every I remember day. being being stood in the window and I'm watching 
Torres do like his his medical, and I'm like, what is this? Like, it's tough. I'm from Sheffield. I'm not used to <laughs> like 50 million pound players yeah, yeah. running about. And he was their record signing at that time. Yeah, as well. he was. So it was just a madness. And I think going getting a transition. Mm. Um, obviously, I moved down when I was 14. Mm. Um, I got put in a private school down there. Mm. Obviously, I went. We went public school in it. Mm-mm. I went to a private school. It was like. Um, Oh, I forgot what the program's called. Um, do you know who Theopathetus is? No. The guy out of Dragon's Den. Okay, okay. So one of one I of the people that sits down on yeah, Dragon's yeah. Den. On the panel, I'll, yeah. I go to school and I'm speaking to like some of the people, Pirates Bear Posh. Got there the first day, speaking, the girl to girl goes to me, speak properly. What? I'm like, what, what are you on about? It's because of the accent. And yeah. I was like, oh, whatever. I go, oh, like, what do you do, bro? Oh, my dad, my dad's on Dragon's Den. <laughs> what? You are? <laughs> yeah, my wow. dad's one of the people who, like, invests in companies on Dragon's Den. I'm like, wow. Lord have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, over my head Big business, isn't it? Big, big business. Big business. Got a free laptop when you went to the school. <laughs> like, it was just crazy. Wow. So getting used to that was, was different. But even when I was at school, all I could think about was, all right, I need to screw my head on like yeah, I'm at yeah. Chelsea. And I remember I used to go in some, it, I think it was like three days a week out of the five days I was at school. They'd get me in for two lessons and then I'd have a driver, like I'd have a personal driver that would pick me up from school Shofa. and then take me to training. Daft. So that was, it was just nice. so surreal. Like, mm. And then I think it hit, hit, hit home because Obviously, being 14 on your own in London, it was quite lonely. Mm. Like, I, I had, like, I basically had to get a foster family, mm. which mm. is Diggs now. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. because I was so young, you mm. couldn't call it Diggs. Diggs. It had to be a foster family. So I had to live with them, and I didn't enjoy it. So mm. um, luckily, Chelsea paid for a, a house for my mom to move down. Very serious. So then that Brother was it. Rich. Like, when when my family was there, that that was, like, set in stone. I was like, all right, that's sweet. I'm, I'm happy now. So that's when I started enjoying my football the most. I rate that, you know, card. That's proper. That's what I'm saying. Like in terms of that difference in 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 integrity. There's levels fi- to it. There's levels to it. There's levels to it still. Finances, resources to be able to say, do you know what? We've actually invested in in this club in these players. So we have to give them the yeah, best stability, 100%. stability, comfortable, right people around you, X, mm-hmm. Y, and Z. But obviously, you was in public school, Keenan, you both was at the same school. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, you obviously being a baller as well. I've watched you kick ball from being like, say, eight years old. Daft player. Wicked player. Agile, as you know, it's tough. Do you know from what I mean? School, got... From school days. It was, a, it, was a crazy da- it was a crazy tag team still, them, them school <laughs> Yeah, games. it was. It was. <laughs> a crazy tag team Dangerous, still. Isn't it? Dangerous, Dangerous. Dangerous. Pace on both wings. and Dangerous, man. Different. It was good All fun. the techers. So, so, so always playing at a level that you did, you know, uh, grassroots, let's call it grassroots. Mm. Um, on the tour of Bredgens, on the tour of Dogs. Now, you both play school most every day, playing mm. the team, know the environment of what it looks like mm. to be competitive. What did it feel like for you? seeing your brethren just catch a move. Obviously, it's not like I'm hating them, man. It would never be that. No. Nah. But what did that feel like? Because you're still trying to attain the same goal that he's just grasped. Mm. So what was that like for you, Kent? You know, when I go back to it, it's kind of crazy still. Mm. It was crazy because, like, obviously, we've gone through year seven, year eight together. And I think you left in, like, year nine, was it? Yeah. And I think just before he left... That's when I just signed at Chef Wednesday. Okay. So there wasn't really much. There was a lot of good footballers in the school, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. But I feel like academy-wise, there was only... Only modest yeah. in my year. Yeah, there was Nathan. Who, but by then, Nathan's gone. Gone, yeah. Nathan's left school. school. Yeah, yeah. Chill, chill, chill. So there was only me and Alex who was really in that academy yeah. self kind of thing. Okay. So then obviously, when he went to Chelsea, it was like, raw. Like, I remember when I signed for Wednesday... And a lot of the people at school were like, yo, congrats, well done. Yes, he was like, oh, dying it. Keenan, you're the baller. <laughs> and then Alex got the move to Chelsea. It's like, yo, my man just doubled my team. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just doubled man. it. 
But it was like, at the same time, it was like, yo, that is a big mm-hmm. move still. Like, mm-hmm. going to Chelsea. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we didn't, up here, we don't play them teams. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you still play big teams, though. Like, you play Man City, you play Man United and whatever. But you don't play none of the London teams. It's really, until you get a bit older. Yeah. So, like, it was never a hating thing, never. I was, I was gassed for him still. It was love. But it was like, yo, I need to, I want to get to where he is now. Like, he, that was, it was kind of like an inspiration to see. Yeah. You know what I'm Jeez. trying to say? I kind of saw his inspiration still seeing Alex get that move still. At such a young age. And yeah, at such a young age. And to be honest, I feel like there was always that bit of competition as well because he was a goal scorer. I was a goal scorer. Mm. Before mm. I went to Notre Dame, I was probably the fastest in my school primary. Yeah, yeah. So when I went yeah. to Notre Dame now, this I'm thinking, guy, yo, yo, I'm still going to be one of the fastest. Man, all I lined up on the sports day, day. I just had to take second with, <laughs> with pride chest, With chest to with take chest. that second with pride from car. <laughs> when I'm all around this bend, my man's over there still. <laughs> like, I'm only just trying to catch him, boys. It's, it's pointless still. It's but yeah, it was always good, healthy competition still. It was healthy competition. Like, we was in a lot of classes together as well. So it was, it was always fun. It was never no, like, oh, he's doing his thing. I'm doing mm. my thing. It was always, yeah, we feel like it's a bit of encouragement still. I always saw that as like a bit of a challenge, man. Was, like I said, there's a, a, a lot of players in the school who could play. So I saw it as like, you know what? It's just going to make you yeah, better. When yeah, you're playing yeah, with better yeah. players, it makes you better still. So yeah, it was, it was it was all right. And I enjoyed playing for school, man. Like the school team was strong, bro. Right? School team was fun, man. I think that's that's the place where you can just express yourself. Yeah, you can. You can just do what you want. And mm. Freedom. And we won a few things. Yeah, we did. I feel we like did. we won a few trophies, year 100%. seven and year eight still. A few. Yeah, I think we <laughs> all about the buses for sure. Yeah, we won a couple of things still. Fully fledged. There's a few ballers. So obviously being at from more grassroots level, because obviously Alex, you was in Rotherham, was it? His, his yeah, first club. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then to Chelsea and Straight then to Chelsea. Keenan yeah. obviously being at grassroots level to then go to Wednesday. What's that like, fam? Yeah, I was gasping. Mm. When I remember, yo, when I first went to train, when I had my first child day, training. But, yo, Wednesday was a strong team still. Yeah. Not even, like, in ability-wise, like, physicality. Yeah, yeah, Everyone yeah, was strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember one guy from Leeds, man, Boyley. My man gave me one hard tackle on my knee, and I thought, boy, <laughs> I need to settle into this quickly, man, yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. The, the tackle was strong, man. I always remember that tackle. But I was gassed on man, car. The boys then were there. There was Cumbria was there. Yeah, yeah, Fabian yeah, was yeah, there. Yeah, 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 you know what I mean? Them were already fully pledged members. Mm, Been mm, there for how long? Mm. Eddie Dak was in the year below. You know what I mean? Mm. Obviously, my, my brother was a couple of years older yeah, as well. Yeah. He played so against was, Pugba, your brother as well, didn't he? He said, yo, he Yeah, yeah, Pugba. yeah. He's played against Pugba still. He played against my man played against some serious players still, my brother. Some serious ballers. Like man who I look at and I thought, yo, yeah, they, they were gonna go all the way yeah, still. But yeah. I think only Pugba really was the one. Obviously, Nathan was there. Yeah, yeah. Like, and Liam Nathan, Palmer, Vidane. Yeah. Like, I didn't really know. I didn't know Liam Palmer. And I didn't really, I didn't really know Vidane too tough. Mm. I, but obviously, I knew Nathan. I think I'd start to know Vidane through Nathan. Okay. You get me? But yeah, I knew yeah, Nathan, yeah, obviously. Yeah. It's funny how I even linked up with Nathan. I must have, must have just before I went to school. Mm. must have seen him on the bus. And me, I'm, obviously, I'm not a shy person, innit? Yeah. I'm not a shy person. So I must have got on the bus one time. must have been like, just before man started Notre Dame. And he's all on the bus here and he's in his tracksuit. I said, oh, you play for Wednesday? Yeah, yeah. You get me? He's like, oh, yeah. And obviously I'm young and that must have been like, oh, do you know my brother, X, Y, Z? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I know my man still. He's dark, he's dark. And then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he's saying, I say, no, so what school do you go to? And he's like, oh, Notre Dame. I'm saying, yeah, I'm coming there in September. <laughs> or gas than that. So he's like, yeah, I'm gonna look out for you still. Then boom, as soon as I went to Notre Dame in September, my mind was just like, had man under his wing and that. And obviously he, when he was in the academy at Wednesday, he was like a, he was like a first team player, more mm-hmm. or less. Yeah, at, Liam and In year 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was playing on a Saturday for the first team. So even seeing that, it was all like, it was motivation, man, just to see man around you 100%. playing ball at a decent level. And it, it makes you realise like, yo, you know what? Maybe, maybe I could get through. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm. You don't you don't look at it not making it. You just think, yeah, I, I want to make it. I'm yeah, going to make yeah. it. And his personality as well, I think being around the same personalities, like-minded people who are just as driven as you was going to make. Man. And the competition yeah. element that you talk about, like, obviously Sheffield Wednesday, levels. You get me? Chelsea, levels. Levels. So, so like, who were the people, just a few names, who were around your, like... In your group of players, I think what Nathan Ack, Ake, yeah, was Nathan he? Nathan Ack, oh, the song. Shalabar. Shaloba. Shaloba. Yeah, uh, Piazon, Dom Solanke, 
Daft. Tammy Abraham. Okay. Deli Eli. Okay, was he at Chelsea? Uh, no, but... Oh, he, yeah, so yeah, around. When we used to go away to England from, like, under 16s, and we all, you, they used to be, like, obviously you used to have little Ooh, groups and stuff like that. And Del was the person that I got along with the most. Yeah. And I think the mad thing is, like, when he was when he was at MK and yeah. I was at Chelsea, yeah. like, I used to go watch him at MK. Yeah. And then we ended up... Um, I remember we always used to speak and we always used to chill and he was flying at MK and I was like, yo, this is, this is mm. big, you know, like you're mm. making moves. And then um, I, was, I was just chilling, watching TV and he was like, bro, turn on Sky Sports. And I was like, what are you talking about? He was like, turn on Sky Sports, you're going to see something. Turned it on. Dell's got to move to Tottenham. I was like, oh, <laughs> Gas for the moment. He said, <laughs> Yeah, get ready for summer because we're going Marbella. <laughs> <laughs> so we went Marb. It was living. So yeah, he, yeah. There was there was so many that, so many in that group that are still playing now, mm. and like the levels, the levels in training and honestly, like different levels. Different. That's different, the big different, difference. Still. Different. Yeah. yeah. Different. Like I always said, like with with the players that I've played with like at England and stuff like that. I've always seen like like Joe Gomez was yeah. used to come uh, away with England and and loads of players like that. All the players that played first team when they was younger, like got a move or doing big things like like even Damari Gray, he Yard man. Yeah. yeah he yeah. he was he was with um he used to come away with England. He was at Birmingham. Then he got his move to Leicester. Then he got his move to Leicester. Yeah, okay. um, I could think of, I could think of so many players that Abundant, yeah. played first team when they were younger yeah. and came up. And then the players that were in the twenty threes or like didn't get around the first team or in and out of the first team just slowly started to drop away because they ain't got that first team experience. Mm. And getting that first team experience when you're young, like my first loan was when I was 17, I went to Barnsley. Okay. And that was like- With stones in that. I remember my dad pulled me and was like, it's gonna be a big, like, you're gonna have to get used to this quick. And I was like, what are you on about? First time I get on the ball, yeah, pick it up halfway line, start driving. I'm running at the back four. This center mid just comes out. I don't even get the ball. Bam, Boom. just takes me out. Like, <laughs> my dad was right. I, I, need, to, I, need, to, I need to get used to this I, quick. I, I sharpen that touch. Yeah, so after that, it's just about being able to ride tackles and be like robust because it's a different kind of game. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And you don't learn that in 23's football. 23 football is nice and you bop it. And, yeah, yeah. But first yeah, team easy. football, you get some people that can't play. Yeah, yeah. But can rat, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, about yeah. knowing how, to about, how to, yeah, knowing how to get around the ratters and show what you're about. Serious, different kind of levels. Yeah, hundred percent. I think that's a bit of northern grit because it's, it is it like, even though it's that age that obviously twenty three is, it's obviously a bit more competitive. Everybody's yeah. obviously grown in stature as well, posture stronger, quicker. Yeah, but up here, like. Us Northerners are kind of known for that different kind of bars. Obviously, being at Wednesday, what was that step up playing against, man? Like, obviously, the teams that we play against probably are Barnsley's in your um, Manchester's in your United, Sheffield United's in your Chesterfield's. What's that level like? I feel like the Barnsley and the Sheffield thing, it's all the, it's all the same. They're all as physical as each other, academy or not. Yeah. Even like if you play against your Sunday League Barnsley teams, yeah, they're yeah. physical. Yeah, yeah. When you yeah. play against the academies, they're even more physical. Yeah. And I feel like at Sheffield, at your Sheffield teams, it's probably not as much ball work. Yeah. It's more how strong you are. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, how strong you are. Um, what else? Like, just bare physical still. Like you want, you need to be big. You need to be yeah, strong, strong. You know what I mean? It's not much technical, technical work. Obviously, you still get your technical ballers, of course. That's just standard. But so it's, it's a bit more physical stuff. So obviously, like the physicality is mad. It's just a northern. Yeah. Like, I'd say it's northern. So 
did you ever get to play even in like the cups against like Alex at a later stage or 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 are our cups more situated up north? Mm. So you wouldn't really catch like a an Arsenal or like a Chelsea or like a Crystal Palace in the cup. No, I was, I think when you get to like FA Youth Cup, that's the only time. That's the only time. Okay. As a, as in academy setup, you don't play like no cup competition. It's not even a league. Mm. It's not even a league. Every game is basically a friendly, really and truly. That's wicked. It's it wasn't not... until the later time that you started becoming like a league. Yeah, yeah. Once you got every, your scholar. It, you got a tier system and then that's when the league started to come in. So how does that work then? Because what? My man just calls my man at Chelsea. He said, oh, Crystal Palace, I want to... Uh, what's your schedule saying? He, like, is it like yeah, that? Yeah, that's, that's, that's what it used to be like. That's what it used to... But is it still week in, week out? Yeah, like there'll that's be a fixture list. Setup. There'll be a fixture list. Like yeah. you'd know who you're playing each week. But like you won't be playing for Is nothing. Is it a league table? Nah, there's no league table. That's mad. <laughs> there's no that's league table mad. still. So it's like, and that's probably where the fun comes out of it sometimes as well. Yeah. Because yeah. so when you're coming from Sunday League, especially when I was at, obviously I came from El Marshall, and we were I think mm. like we just got promoted from um, I think D division, so we was in C division now. Mm. Just got promoted, and we're trying to we're trying to get promotion again. So you're playing <laughs> for something each week. You're playing. Mm. You're trying to get three points to to get through and be mm. hiring the league then boom you go to the academy now and you ain't playing for it and you're just playing for your not for yourself obviously but you're on show in it you're playing for your for your future so it's mad though because i never knew that at all mm. and that's interesting because then how do you measure who's actually elite then if if there isn't a kind of table to all right then this team's the obviously they will have an idea of all right we slapped them four one early on in in the season, but if you're not playing for <coughs> anything, how do how do you still get that mindset to say, do you know what? Like, I've still got to be that guy. Cause you don't want to get released. <laughs> okay. I think for me it was so. My dad's motivation was, and I'll never forget this. I remember I went to I went to Hansworth, and um. Like we're playing, we're playing in the league, obviously doing whatever. And um, he used to give me like a goal bonus, so it'd be like five or a goal. Sick. So obviously you try to score as many goals as you can. I remember, I came off at half time once. I was like, "Yes, Dad, I've got a hat trick." Like, I, I, I'm, like I'm fifteen yeah, quid in. I'm fifteen <laughs> quid in. Like, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm having some sweets in that. I'm buying some cards, some Pokemon cards. And um, those are the days. He was like. What are you on about? I was like, what do you mean? I got three goals. Like, we're winning. He was like, you could have had 10. Yeah, yeah. He was no, like, yeah. three's nothing. Yeah, yeah. He was like, get more goals. Yeah, yeah. And I think I came off with about nine goals that game. Daft. And he was like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like, you should never think, like, you got three goals, it's good enough. You should mm. always be like, every chance you get to score, score. Mm. So from that, it's always been like, I've always had that, that mindset of almost, One's not enough. Two's not enough. Mm. Like, just keep going until until the game's over. Do you know what I mean? Like, you can see it in games where people get their goal and slack off, or yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's not it's it's not that like it's that elite mentality. Yeah, you need to time. make sure that you walk off the pitch and someone goes, yeah, four goals today. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, he, he, he got three last week and yeah, all flipping Eki. He's, he's unbelievable. Like, he just scores goals for fun, yeah. and I feel like that's that's what helped me. Get the move, because I You're was just, just slapping yeah, going relentless. I was just, I was just relentless, in, relentless in everything that I did. Like even I remember I used to go when I when I first went into Chelsea. They used to get you in in the in the morning. It'd be like eight o'clock in the morning, and it'd be like a stress test. So basically, this guy would get you in. He'd hook you up with like heart whatever, and um, there'd be a little screen. And there'd be numbers on the screen and different stuff on the screen. You'd have to read out the numbers in sequence, but he'd be shouting at you. So there'd be like microphones yeah. and he'd be shouting at you like different stuff. <laughs> and it was to to recreate being on the pitch and being yeah. able to make decisions and okay. and read the numbers on the pitch while other stuff is going on. That's different Tough. level. That Tough. is different level. So did sports science and thing. Did you lot see anything like that at Wednesday or because it's resources as well. Yeah. If you think about the the kind of stature, it's Chelsea, isn't it? 
yeah. Chelsea, man. It's the, the, that's it's different, different levels, man. Different kind of level. But it's still, regardless if it's Chelsea, Wednesday, El Marshall, Handsworth, it takes that, as you're saying, it takes that elite mentality. Because as you were saying, what? I don't, I'm scared of getting released. Mm. Um, so we'll go on at Wednesday with, like, how long were you there, like, in terms of your kind of run? I was there for like a year and a bit still. Okay. Yeah, I went. I went there for 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 too too long to be honest. Okay. I was there for a year and a bit because, well, I think I went there like under thirteens, mm-hmm. then under under fifteens. I remember playing Sunday league with Middlewood, so I was probably yeah, just over yeah. a year and a bit yeah. still, something yeah. like that. Trying yeah. to get that. Yeah, cause I definitely had I had a few assessments. Uh, yeah, yeah. Got through a yeah. few assessments, yeah. like Serious. positive news. Serious. And then obviously you had the dread, the worst assessment, which was we're not keeping you on. And it's mad because I feel like obviously I've I've seen you grow mm. in essence, uh, and obviously you've had to mature quite quickly in that environment as well because it's high like it's what do they call it they call it hyper masculine environment where every person needs mm. some sort of not ego in in a sense to kind of survive because everybody's excellent. So how does it feel like to be told, no, like we're letting you go essentially? No, oh, you feel you feel shit, man. You feel horrible. Mm. You feel horrible still. I, I remember, I still remember the day now. Mm. It was horrible still. They, obviously they just rang my mom. I didn't even, I didn't even, we didn't even go in for a meeting. Literally just mm. rang my mom and said, oh, we're not going to be taking him on for the next season. And it was heartbreaking still. I didn't know what to do. I'll mm. be honest, I didn't know what to do. Because mm-hmm. it's all like, Away from the football side, you have your family mm. who see you as someone who plays mm. football and mm. your friends see you as you play football. Mm. So it's almost like your almost pressure's already, already built on you to make it. Mm. People don't really understand the academy setup. You know, when you look outside looking in, mm. you think as someone who's playing academy football, they've made it. Mm. That, like That's what people think if they mm. don't know. But it's not the case at all. Mm. There's bare use. Like, when you're at the academy, man, you know how many people you see come and go? Coming in and out. In and out. Just in It's a revolving out. door. So you see bare people come. Oh, yeah, he's hard. Then you might come back in a few months. Oh, he's gone. Mm. Literally. So it's it's pressure as well, man. It's, it, a lot, you can get a lot of pressure from the outside because people think, oh, yeah, he's, he's hard. He's a good footballer. He's made it. He plays for this academy, plays for that academy. So when you do get released, it, it's hard because it's like, yo, I got to tell people now that I'm not playing there no more. You know what I mean? It can, yeah. it can affect you mentally still. Yeah, Obviously, bad. I was lucky though because I was able to deal with it mental, mental mm-hmm. side. Like my dad supported me through it. My mum supported me through it. Your bro, bro, obviously, um, still be in the academy as well. Yeah, so I, I was able to get through it, to be honest. And obviously as well, straight away, like, obviously certain clubs will say this just for, just to say, but obviously when you're a kid and you hear it, you take it on. Like mm-hmm. my coach at the time was um, a guy called Marcus Macker, good coach though, but he was like, yo, you and another player who I got released with at the same time, guy called Connor Smythe, great player. It was like, oh, you two go down to Middlewood Rovers. Mm. We still got connects with those guys. Who was there now? That John guy. Yeah, John Bryce was the man- manager. Ex, what team you play for that? Like Newcastle. Newcastle. Yeah, Newcastle. The damn player. Yeah, yeah, left left back. So they were, I think he, I think he's got some relation to the, to a Macker, in fact. Okay. So he was like, yeah, go down there and we'll just keep a look out of you. And obviously pre seasons we play Chef Wednesday as well. Okay. So. Went down there and yeah, that was all right still. So obviously you still managed to keep a good standard of football just because he was there, John. Yeah. Since obviously ex Newcastle player is he's kind of still got that yeah. Yeah that way of thinking. Because in essence it was grassroots academy and then grassroots again. Yeah. But this was high grassroots. It was high grassroots because Middlewood Road. Yeah, this was, yeah. I never played this high in grassroots football before. This was Division A Cup finals and yeah, yeah, and league yeah, titles. Yeah, yeah. Under 15s, under 16s, we won the league and cup, league and cup. Yeah. yeah <laughs> under yeah, 15s, like dominated it. It was a different level still. So, is obviously you've seen pure people just in and out the door, yeah. in and out the door. Is it, obviously, you went on loan quite a few times. Yeah. Is it the same kind of feeling of being released by the club? Or is it like, it, it's still my parent club, so I'm yeah. just going somewhere to get I experience think, or yeah. what? How with do you think with about Chelsea, it, it was a totally different, like, 
different like there was a group chat i remember i had a group chat on my phone and it was all the all the Ch- all the players that were online at chelsea and at that time it was stupid like there was there was like 20 30 people in that Duh. chat and then you look in the chat and there was like i remember salah was in there <laughs> Mo, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Mo Salah. Um, <laughs> Vic- Victor Moses was in there. Um, all the players that were out on loan was in this chat. Mm. And it was like, they'd always put like, oh, this is the player of the week. Like, the and chat. at this time I was on loan at Crew, yeah. and I, I was flying. Like, yeah. I, I think I had like 10 goals in the first 12 games or something. Different I was going stuff. stupid. And I remember for for the first two months, I got player of the season, like player of the month in this chat. I'm thinking, there's some ballers in here. In here, yeah, yeah. And um, I remember I was up for player of the month for for the league at that point. And I was like, I'm just enjoying football. Like mm, this, mm. this is this is all I've ever wanted. And when when you was on loan, it was more like they were just sending you out to get experience. Yeah, like yeah. they were always keeping tabs on you. Yeah, they'd yeah. always send someone to the games. Like it was yeah. never like you was just out the loop and yeah. they were doing their thing. It was yeah. actually felt like they were developing you for something. Yeah. Um, but for me personally, it reached a point where I was just like, I can't, I can't stay here anymore. Mm-hmm. So I remember they offered me um, another year. And I turned it down. I said, look, I'm going to go. Chelsea. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go play. Why? I said, I'm going to go play first team football. And that's when um, Darren Ferguson came in for me, okay. gave me a call. Um, Alex Ferguson's son. He was Serious. the manager of Doncaster. Serious. And he said, look, you played against us. I think you're unbelievable. Mm-hmm. He was like, but I don't want to take you on loan. I want to work with you as, as, yeah. as a player. Yeah. Like, I think you've got real good potential. And my dad was like, listen, it's your choice. Your choice. He was like, Obviously, you want to play first team football. He was like, if you stay at Chelsea, you might get sent on loan again. You mm. might get, you might get a look in first team. You never know. At this point, we've got different managers coming in and out of mm. Chelsea like every season. Yeah, like, it was changing up. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was mad at so Chelsea still. I made the decision, sign a free year at Doncaster, um, but it killed me because my first season, obviously, I got injured. Um, had an illness where I lost feeling in my legs. I'm gonna say, speak on that. What's it called? Gillian Barr. Barr. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. Got a feeling where I lost feeling in my legs. Went went in for the first session. Passed my medical, flying. Went in for the first session, and we're doing a f- like a fitness sprint test. Mm. And I'm losing to players that are o- overweight. Like I yeah. cannot move. Especially a guy who's being rapid. From yeah, what cannot you? move. And I remember um. the gaffer going. I thought he was quick, and I was like, gaffer, I can't move. Like I'm, I'm in pain. And he was like, all right, go and see the physio and see what's happening. They thought it took him two months to diagnose what I had. I went for head scans. I went, gave me a asthma thing, thinking it was asthma. And um, I remember I, um, the physio was like, I don't know what's wrong. Like we've tried everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember I went and did like a five minute warm up, and that was it. Went home, came back the next day. I was walking like my legs were sticks. Like I was like, I can't move. And I said, I've got to see a neurologist. And at this point, neurologists are expensive to go mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. And I said, look, I need to go see one. So I went to go see one. And when I saw the neurologist, he said, look, you got Gillian Barr. You need to go to the hospital tomorrow. Or else you, yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. won't be able to walk. It needs diagnosing properly, yeah. rapid. He was like, you won't be able to walk. So went to the hospital. Um, they took fluid from my spine, realized I had like a B12 deficiency mm. and basically told me I'd never play again. And at this point, I'm like, tragic. Just signed a three year, like I've just literally just taken, mm. not taken a year at Chelsea to to come here to mm. play under this manager, and um, like ha- was on a drip for a week, started to feel better. Mm. Um, at this point, I could couldn't even really walk, like I was walking weird, like couldn't walk, couldn't walk upstairs. Um, so a month later, I'm sat. And I'm like, nah, I need to, I need to try and get back. I need to try and get back. So, um, what's that like though? Like, 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 
obviously in your mind, well, I don't know what was going on in your mind. Mentally, at that point. I was gone. Like and mentally, I was just. That's like, what I'm saying. Like, is there any kind of psychological support for those kind of things? Because obviously, we talk a lot about mental health and football now, but I think I, don't I think know. was a, there any support? A big factor was was my dad because mm. so something happened to my dad at Sheffield Wednesday mm. where he hurt his back. Physio mm. was stretching him out, hurt his back, and, um, and they told his club. They I told just, him he wouldn't play again. I just saw the physio talking about. That's what, that's what he did. Talking he did. about. He did, he he did it. Yeah, yeah, standard. With, with, with Sheffield Wednesday. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like he was just like, look, and he ended up coming back after that. So after that, I was like, if my dad can do it, I can do it. And that was that was my mentality. If my dad can do it, I can do it. And, and it took me going in to learn to walk again, to then going into football, learning how to just play a ball, mm. slowly build myself up. And it wasn't till, it wasn't bad. till the end of the season, the second to last game, um, came up against Fleetwood, my debut. I'm starting, score within the first two minutes of the game. Daft. I was like, I'm back. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, back. yeah, yeah, yeah. After that, came to the end of the season. Um, Gaffer's like, look, um, some some problems higher up, like he's not yeah. getting along with the people higher up. Yeah. I'm gonna have to leave. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I great. To, I've just come back. But so when <laughs> they come in, they're gonna see I've been out for a season, not gonna give me a look in. Misfortune after misfortune. New Gaffer intruder. comes in, starts me the first two games, do well, brings in um, some of people that he's had yeah. previously, says, look, um, you ain't played for a season. I think you need to get a season under your belt. We'll send you out on loan. Go on loan to Chesterfield. Do well at Chesterfield. Stay there the whole season. Come back. He leaves. Oh, New gosh. gaffer comes in. New gaffer comes in. Um, I know this gaffer though, so we're getting along. And I'm like, I'm having having problems with my ankle. Okay. So this is like, I could, I'll play a game, roll my ankle, I'm out for two weeks. And it turns out when I was 14, I was playing in something called Night Cup, which mm. was like, um, it was like, it was like, it's kind of like Youth Cup. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Bigger. Yeah. So. International kind of. Yeah. So you play Night Cup. Anyone who wins, like the English one, goes and plays then, yeah, the world yeah, the one. World. Serious. So I injured myself in the, in the nationals, um, but play on, play on it. And um, it turns out that I ruptured two ligaments in my ankle at that time. At but that age. At that age. But I'd played on it for, for years. For six years, five years after. For years. And um, it's mad that, it, it's mad because when you speak about how advanced it was at Chelsea with, with all like, the monitors and the, yeah. uh, that in terms of like, the physios and whatever else, it's this was like, yeah, he was cooped mad. up in a hotel. Yeah. It was like uni apartments at like yeah. uh, Warrington. Yeah. And um, the physio was like, can you play on it? And me being like- Yeah, that is, yeah, I'm gonna run it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can yeah, play yeah. on it. Yeah. Played on it, um, nursed it back better. Um, kept on playing it, kept on rolling it, yeah. but just kept on strapping it. Yeah, yeah. It weren't until the physio went, look, you keep doing your ankle, we're gonna have to send you for a scan. Went for a scan um, mid-season. Obviously, new gaff is coming. I'm playing, like, starting Regular. to enjoy ball again. Sends me for a scan. You've ruptured two ligaments in your ankle. You've got oh. two pieces of bone floating in there. You're going to have to have an operation or else you're going to keep doing it. Oh, my God. I yeah, it's like, long now. Just, it's this getting is long. Misfortune after misfortune. It's getting and long. people don't see that side, though. No, nah, they don't. People don't see that, like, the injury side and... 100%. They just see the the high life and oh yeah he plays ball but there's just so much. You had a couple nuts drops still. that happen. I've, I've kind of got through injury free to be honest. I'm the same though with my ankle. Yeah. Even though now, nuts. even though now just rotating my ankle under the table, Tell I can feel it. Yeah. So that's making me think, raw. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But obviously, there's certain man that can just play through the pain. Yeah. Mm. And there's certain man who's be like, nah, man, I need to, I need to, I need to sit down for a bit. But I'm one of those guys that like, I'll just play through the pain, me. Just played through the pain. Like, you can't, can't afford <laughs> yeah, to miss yeah, a game, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, Years, yeah, bro. Play through this pain. Yeah. So that was it. And then had my ankle operation, came back, COVID hit. That was it. 
So, yeah, that sounds like a lot of misfortune, a lot of time out of the game. It's, um, it's quite sad, really, still, because obviously as a player of your ability, being at a range of clubs, mm. scoring goals, obviously building a reputation for yourself, like you said earlier, having that time out, but based on your injuries, would have been a, a bit mad. Um, obviously, I know Keenan had some time out, but your time out looked a bit different. Like, I don't know, like, for me, you, you were kicking ball and then you wasn't. Yeah, literally. Literally well, still. What's going on there, kid, man? Like, 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 what's going on? So obviously, naturally, like, Sunday League under 16 is finished. Mm. And then obviously now, because of the team was that well, like the players were trying to get a scholar. Mm. We had a man going scum for Sheffield United. Um, I ended up going like down to, um, I went down to Chesterfield. Mm. I was down there for the whole of pre-season and the start of the season, mm. just trialing at Chelsea. I did like six weeks there, six weeks trial, but trialing for the scholar. And I feel like when I was at Chesterfield, like in my own mind, I thought, yo, this scholar is coming. Mm. I was, I was, I was, I was, I was on form still. I was even getting asked to go train with the um with the youth teams at Warminster on a Friday on a Thursday and a Friday. Mm. Um and then obviously the games on the weekend. So I thought I really thought I was in the mix still. Unfortunately, I never I never got it. So then I, for me personally, I just started to think like maybe this football isn't for me. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Maybe that's not what my life's intended to go to be a professional footballer. Mm. You know, you know that realization. So obviously after that, I must have done like um I knew a guy called Chris Dolby. Mm. Um, he took me down to um, in fact no sorry Bruce Dyer yeah he was at Barnsley Lewis's, um, yeah yeah Godfather Godfather he was a, he was a, he's like a Barnsley legend Bruce Dyer so he was like yo they do a programme like a development programme mm. everyday footballing mm. with an education on the side so okay. go down there yeah. so I did that for a year which was good as well I enjoyed that and then my manager there was Chris Dolby and he was like yo I'm connected with Chef FC mm. I like you Go there, which is obviously the first club in the world, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's like, a so it's club, so for a non-league it's football, seven. it's a decent. That's yeah. a well-recognized team, Sheffield FC. Mm. So I went down there and straight away I was with the eight, with the um, like I think I was with the under nineteens, trying to get into the first team and rare rare rare. And that was that was a good that was good to be honest. But then a lot of politics started to come involved with Sheffield FC over the, over a couple of seasons, and I just started to fall out of love with it. To be honest, I just started to get like just wearing me down a bit. Like I knew I, every time I played for my eight for the youth team at Sheffield FC, I was scoring, mm -hmm. um, playing well. And I just wasn't really getting a sniff. Obviously, I had a manager called Jordan, great guy. Um, when he was the manager, he took me with the first team a couple of times. But after he left, like it, I just I just struggled to get a look in and I just fell out of love. And then obviously other things in life started to mm -hmm. take a more dominant control over my life. Mm -hmm. So it kind of, as I was putting more effort into those things, yeah, my football yeah. just kind of got pushed to the side. It kind of diminishes. Yeah, and then eventually you're not playing anymore. So mm -hmm. I ended up having like three seasons away. And when I look back on it now, it's probably one of my biggest regrets not playing football for mm -hmm. those three years. Like mm -hmm. if I could go back to 2021, mm -hmm. um, that age, 20, 21 years old, I'd, I'd definitely still be playing. I want to stop. Yeah, it's mad because I feel like so close yet so far, but I still want it, but Again, misfortune. Mm. It you both kind of had it with still being mad successful. Injuries yourself, obviously, release fell out of love. Um, yeah, it's kind of mad from. Um, did it feel somewhat like that? Obviously, in your younger days, being in England, playing in seventies, eighties, nineties, but just not breaking true into the national like the first team cause your team was, was dark like yeah who was in that team just briefly a couple big hitters um joe gomez was one damari gray was one delhi was one mm. um ruben loftus cheek serious yeah um i'm trying to think who else Serious England team. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it was it was a good team. Like it was a good group of lads as well. Like the competition was good. Um, What's it like playing on an international stage? Though, like, is it because you're all all at different parent clubs, 
But I think you just felt different in it. Like yeah. obviously, if you if you going into Chelsea and then like you going oh, going away with like with the, the national, national squad. Team. Yeah, I'm going right. away with the national team. I'm on, on international break. <laughs> like, Rinsing it, innit? Yeah, that was like, I'm going on Sounds international. Sounds official, but yeah. this is very official. My boys would be like, oh, you, you coming back? You coming out? And I'd be like, no, I'm on international break. Sorry, like. Sorry, like. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, like. Most of it was like, it was a lot of traveling and mm. obviously you're representing your country, so. It's, it's different. It's different. It's different. You know what I mean? And then on top of that, you're playing with the best people in the world from other teams. Yeah, so. you're playing against the best people in the world. You're playing with the best players at your age in yeah. the country. So yeah, in the country. So it's in like, the world. Yeah, so it's like it's 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 different and it's a learning experience because you'll think that you're doing well in your environment, mm. and then say if you go to international. And then you see people that different. at the top of their team, you're like, all right, that's that's my competition. Like, that's all right then. Like, obviously, international levels are different, different kettle of fish. Not even just listen, I take shit. When I I uh, I was growing up, I always wanted to be that guy who comes off, jumps off the team boss. You know what I mean? Little wash bag. <laughs> you know what I mean? A little Gucci wash bag and take it. Yeah, just be that guy. You were that guy amongst other guys that are that guy. Mm. Who have you actually played against then, like, on international level? Because obviously there's Spain, there's Germany, there's France, there's there's Brazil, there's... It's England, like... I think if you... It's if, mad. If you name anyone that's around my age group, I've played against them. And I remember the, the maddest one was... Um, so we play against Leroy Sané. <sighs> and um, I remember... We played against him. Um, he was at Schalke, weren't he? Yeah. So we played time. against him at Schalke, and then I'm in I'm in a club in Manchester, and like two tables are just chilling, and I turned to one of my, one of my boys goes, "Oh, that's that's Leroy Sané over there," and I was like, "What?" Mad. Turned over, I was like, "Oh, yo, yo." Went over, I was like, yo, oh, what are you doing here? Like, what's going on? And he was like, oh, I'm looking to move here. Like, uh, I'm looking at a club. And I was like, oh, who is it? And he was like, oh, I'm thinking about City. And I was like, I swear down. Like, Shit. I was like, well, obviously from Germany, I was yeah. like, oh, if, if you're ever around and this time I'm living in yeah, Manchester, yeah, yeah. I was like, just hit me up with chill. Like, yeah, yeah. and um, I remember he got a massive move to City and I was like. Mad. <laughs> like, Mad. Mad. just, just. It little, seems kind of normal though, isn't it? Because obviously, you're one of the best in your country yeah. for your age, and he's one of the best in his country for his age. So him getting a move to City, yeah, that's mad, but it's kind of like yeah. my levels, when you, if when you know what I mean. I think I've just got used to when I see players go on a big move or even a move in general, I'm just like, oh, okay. Because at, at the end of the day, it's football. Do you know mm. what I mean? At the end of the day, it's football. And... Um, it's very unlikely that someone stays at a club for a long time, unless you're like a, a John Terry or someone like that. Like a lot of players move about, jump mm. and change in different environments and stuff like that. So I think it's just something that you get used to. So now then, obviously, fast forward years, uh, you both played against some Dan players, world level, club level, national level. You both played against some Dan players around your age group. How does it feel now seeing man like or you've played with, played against Jack Grealish? I don't Delhi Ali. Like pff, Smive you used on about earlier, on that level. Like, what does it feel like to know say that, yo, dog, that could, should, was me? Obviously for Keenan having more time out of the game because it felt like I love, but I'd all now still playing semi-professional. Football slapping daft numbers. I think what how much goals you want now? Like 20 19 for the 19, season. 20 so goals. He was playing on a Saturdays down at Red Rose store. In the squad of brace on, on the weekend just gone. Yeah, yeah, on Friday, quarterfinals. So obviously trying to make that climb back. How do you I've still got the same drive? Oh yeah, definitely. Now. Definitely. If not more. If not more. Just obviously now I'm not looking it to be a professional. Mm. But I'll be honest though, I've had a bit of inspiration from a few guys. Mm. Who have, who have come from, like... Humble beginnings. Yeah, right? I'm not even talking to Jamie Vardy's. I'm talking, like, guys that I can really reach out to, like, like 
Aaron Martin, mm, mm, Warren mm, Burrell. Yeah, yeah, you get yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, like what yeah. I seen with them man do at Harrogate, yeah, 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 man yeah. have to applaud it. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Like that's inspiration, especially like Aaron, his story where he's coming from. Yeah, 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 yeah. And how he got back into the game, yeah, yeah. smacking it off in a quick period of time. Yeah, yeah. To then levels. get in a move to Harrogate. His levels. Then now playing in League Two. Yeah. And he's like, what I'd probably say about it, he's like 27, he's 28. My, my is 28. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> obviously, obviously, if you can get if you can sneak into the league now, excellent. But I just want to get as high in, in this non-league thing as I can and just try and make a bit of change out of the ball and still be enjoying it and still trying to score goals and that really that's my that's my ambition and I'm hungry than ever right now. Like obviously this is my first real competitive season mm-hmm. season back. Mm-hmm. And you're doing well. And I've, I've done all right, to be honest, doing to say well. I'm, this is my first year back. Mm. So we just see what the future holds and hopefully I can just keep going and keep scoring, man. I love Come scoring on. goals. Yeah, I love <laughs> like, scoring, man. So you're on the climb back. Are you, do you feel out that, yo, obviously Kings Lynn's still a massive club in the UK. How, because you've played at that elite, I'm talking at elite. Mm. That, top that, of the that, tops. That, Top of the tree level. Mm. How how big is that climb back to that level for you? I think personally, I could get back there. Mm. Mm. I think it's just mm. a lot of a lot of mental and knowing mm. my body. Yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. like I went through a time where, obviously, when I came back, I couldn't I couldn't really play mm-hmm. more than two three games in a row because my body wasn't yeah. wasn't ready for it, yeah. and I feel like I've spent the last the last year, year and a half, making sure that my body is ready for back-to-back games. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's what this season has been about. Like yeah. I was saying to Keenan, I went out to Turkey before yeah. at the beginning of the season, year. Season, yeah. And um, I played a team, uh, played for a team called Karagumruk. And they played in a friendly against Fenerbahce. Serious. We won the game. It's that level there. Yeah, so it, it, was, it was Super League. Like, yeah, we was going to yeah. play against like, the Trazon Spores and the Galatasaray and stuff like that. And um, I was speaking to a player after the game, said basically they haven't paid the players in eight months. Yeah. So that was. I've heard a lot of that in Turkey as well, haven't I? Yeah, I've like, got told that before. And I do just, you know? I just do said, you know what? No, it's not. <laughs> for me. Yeah, you're so not working with that. Came, Money after Mick, man. Yeah, yeah, I came back and I was just like, this year for me was just about playing. Like yeah, I yeah. didn't really care about like the wages or anything like that. I just yeah. wanted to play. Like Bumble. I just wanted to get back to playing. And I went to Chesterfield, um, texted Chesterfield managers saying, "Do you mind if I come down and train?" Yeah. And he said, "Yeah, not a problem. Like we'd love to have you." Went down first training session. He was like, "I want to offer you a contract." <laughs> He was like, we ain't got much money because of COVID, but yeah. we'll offer you month to month and then yeah, we'll just yeah. keep it rolling. I said, yeah, that's fine. Like, as long as I'm playing, I don't yeah, care. Yeah. Um, played, did well. Gaffer got the sack. <sighs> Misfortune again. again. And then you know, new, manager, with it. <laughs> new manager came in, just basically said, with the shape that I play, I don't play with wingers. Mm-hmm. It was like, I'll be interested in you next season, but for this season, you're not going to play. Um, luckily, I played well that season, uh, like the beginning of the season. So Kingsley came in, and said, "Look, we just want to play you. Mm-hmm. If you want to play, then that's cool." I said, "All right, cool." Signed at Kingsley, been playing week in week out, and now I can play week in week out Can't now. Yeah. Got goals, got assists, so now I'm just like, "All right, I'm sweet. Yeah. Like I'm ready yeah. to ready to kick on now." You're looking for that next step now. Yeah, hundred percent. Obviously, being a dad as well, yeah. that will obviously. Is it two? Yeah, two. two boy and a girl. So that blessings. Yeah, hundred percent. I think that gives me more motivation yeah. than than before to make sure that like my kids are good and yeah. they're all sorted. So that's just even more fuel to the fire for me to yeah. to want to get back to that level. I see that still changing up the things, changing up the things because it does, don't it? Like as as we were saying, I've come like. Having a family changes a lot, and it will obviously be your motivation. your main motivator. Yeah, now. It's your main motivation. Before it was just wanting to be the best of what I could be, and now it's like I have to be the best of what I can be for my kids, and leaving a legacy that they mm. are sweet in whatever they want to do. Yeah. That I've done my job to make sure that they're provided for. Ratings, mm-hmm. ratings, Kai. It's been. Um, 
There's a new track on the J. Cole album. I'm not even sure if you man have heard the J. Cole album that it's very cold. Um, I definitely go check that. I'm not plugging it by the way. It's just a cold <laughs> album. You know? I hate it's still. called a climb back. And it just speaks about that whole essence of knowing that your levels mm. and being willing to kind of do the hard work to get back to those levels as you're saying, yo, I'm just trying to reach as high as possible in the non-league and see where it takes me. You're back playing games. Yeah. Assist goals. It's running. So yeah. I respect the climb back because obviously I don't know how many players do actually make it pro to say it's like a percentage. Yeah, yeah it's a lot. I've seen something say like one percent or something. It's ridiculous. It's daft. What was it? Something like a hundred in a million. That's dumb. We even play Premier League foot a minute in Premier League football. Like it's, it's ridiculous, man. Yeah. Everybody wants to be a footballer, man. When you grow up. Me too. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. You know what I mean? Yo, I'm trying to be that guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, but um, man. yeah, man, it's been a mad career. Um, quickly, career highs and lows. Quick fire. Quick fire. Career highs and lows. Oi. Obviously, if you're going far back, signing mm. the academy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The lows, stopping playing. Mm, the mm. regret. Stopping playing. I respect so. it. Stopping playing. Respect it. And obviously, through what you've obviously expressed in terms of your attention was on different things, um, has that still made you like? Obviously, a better person, life experience, just you yeah. know, all them things they call it, does not it? Yeah, of course. You get me relationships, yeah, life experience, it's a learning experience. Co- at the you end of get the me. Day. So I would still argue that yeah, like you might not be entirely fulfilled because you decided to kind of, you know, make a decision that would drastically change your life. As like mm-hmm. you said, you know what? I'm going to turn down this deal at Chelsea. Go there and then misfortune hits yeah. you, but that's obviously the giving man some sort of learning. Yeah, hundred percent. Moving forward, um, 100%. so no road too. in this life's easy, man. No matter what you're doing in it, so mm. there's always gonna be some trials and tribulations along the way, still. Mm. And it's just how you get up and bounce back and the climb back and go go again. No matter people are made at the top mm. in whatever profession it is, football or business, whatever, mm. they're taking some L's along the way, still. That's just normal. That's how life is, man. That's how life is. So you can't. You, it's all about mental strength as well. Like mm. Alex, clearly he's got a strong mind because mm. he's been through some serious situations. And even like, so I know like a lot of players who have been at the top, at Chelsea, Arsenal, Tottenham, wherever mm. academy, from eight years old to sixteen, or whenever, and then they've gone from like that level to like a Doncaster. Can no disrespect to Doncaster. But it's not that level. The drop yeah. in facilities alone Definitely. is massive. Mm. And some players will go there on a Monday morning, being on being at Chelsea on Friday, Simple Monday morning days. they're at Doncaster and they're looking around and they're thinking, Why? What, what the fuck am I doing here? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. Different Where, levels. Where's the exactly. pool? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where's the steam where's room? The, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> that that mentally as well can affect people. Like, 100%. I'm not used to this. Yeah, yeah. I'm not used yeah. to this. So, yeah. upper echelon. You have to rate what Alex has done, though, because mm. Mm. Cool. now he's at King's Lane and he's still got the same hunger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. After yeah. being at the top of Chelsea, man. So, strong mental still. And once you got strong mental in life, man, you can achieve anything still. Trust me. Manners. Can achieve anything. So I said, I, he's just applauded you. Obviously, nice. your um, resilience, fam. But like, what are your career highs and lows? Just, just to name a few. I think my my low point was my injury. Um, yeah. My illness was definitely my low point. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think I could ever get as low as I was in that in that in that point. But the high. Um, I'd say being at Chelsea was my high. Like being in that environment and that winning environment is it was just a high the whole time. And obviously having my family support me there, obviously winning trophies, trophies. winning two youth cups, runners up once, playing we played Norwich, I think it was like thirty thousand or forty thousand wow. in the youth cup final, and then going um, national team, man. Yeah, going national team, going 
Champions League youth final, Different. winning that, and then uh, we ended up losing to Villa in one of the finals. And I remember I got sent off for smashing Jack. <laughs> um, Grealish. Yeah, I got sent off for smashing Jack Grealish. And um, even that, like at the time I was pissed, but yeah. at, at the end of the day, it's experience, it's a story. Yeah, yeah, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. one of those where it's like, yeah, it, it, it's just good. And I remember we played Arsenal in that um, in that tournament. And I remember the, the, this was when like YouTubers were playing Hector, yeah. Hector Bellerin was yeah. playing. I remember the the Arsenal manager after went to the press and said Alex Kimomia was unplayable, like he was unbelievable. And yeah. I was up against Hector. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so then yeah. it's just like, all right, cool. Like, levels, yeah, 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 yeah. And so, I remember Serge played as well. Janabri, yeah, he, he's a ridiculous player. Serge right now. played so to get applauded in in a team where the players are mad like that. It's just like you got to take a high. Do you know what I mean? Serious, yo. I wish I was where other man was. <laughs> you know what I mean? Team boss, pool. You know what I mean? Yo, sauna. You know it is though. You can't beat that team coach away days, but I remember them days. But them days are funny, man. Team coach, yeah. what a day, what a day. Wow. <laughs> them away days, but funny days. Can't beat them still. You can't beat that football banter though as well. Nah, bro. you can't. That I, change room experience. I always like, obviously I know some ex-footballers now and obviously speaking to them and they're like, it's just not the same. Like yeah, you can't yeah. get the same environment. Like The camaraderie is Yeah, yeah and it's, it's like, I find myself even to this day using football banter with my missus and yeah. she just don't get it. Not and we, like, I was speaking to, I was speaking to one of my mates on the way here and I thought I seen on his story that he was going on Big Brother. But he weren't. He was just. He was just on about something else. And I was. He was like, I'd get kicked out for being too mean. And I was like, Yeah, but that's just football, football banter. banter. Like, yeah, yeah. I was like, Sometimes people can take it personally when yeah. really we you just can't bantering. Just you know what I mean? Can't that? take it personal. Still, a lot of people's characters gets made in a change room. Still, hundred percent makes or breaks people. One hundred percent makes I've or got breaks. But. Funny story about. So one time we went over to train with the first team. And this was... What's this at Chelsea? Yeah, this is at Chelsea. So, obviously, as, as a schoolboy, you got to go over early and um, you know, kick the balls about and that. And then the first team start coming out of their building. So, um, we're all stretching, saying hello. Like, Drogba comes out late, strolls out, and he's got his gloves on. We're all in a circle, stretching. And um, because he came out late, none of us said hello to him. Mm. So, he's stretching in the circle. He looks around. He's like, say hello now. <laughs> Man is like, what? <laughs> so obviously, we're all in this massive circle. We've all had to walk up to him, say shake hello. his hand. Man is. And some guy went up to him with gloves on and went, and he was like, no, no, take the gloves off, and shake my hand proper. properly. Yeah. And it was like, it's different like, yeah, it's different. <laughs> presence, man. Presence. Presence. Yeah, presence. Yeah. presence because of presence. Listen. <laughs> It's mind blowing because I feel like all of us have had like moments where you're thinking, yo, that was an influential kind of moment. Yeah. That Chug was telling man, no, oh, no. Nah. Come say morning. But shit, my hand, fam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just saw some respect. Did you hear Jug, fam? This is the guy who I seen slapping goals in the top bins doing this. Yeah. Normal. Normal. Yeah. Normal. Sat there. So just. Influencers wise then, just in life quick, like what and who, if it's a player, if it's a, if it's a mentor, if it's a family member, if it's just like, what are your influences like, or what have been your influences? Um, I was in a professional watching football, Tierra and Re number one. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to Go just look, yeah, <laughs> Listen, look up to him and just see what he could do. Do you know just what? Just try to copy that. Arsenal need you and you right now, <laughs> Carl. Bamyang's not doing no and <laughs> Your lack of slacking, so that sounds like it could run. Yeah, you know I mean, one and two <laughs> goals might be in there still. <laughs> and then who else? Obviously, personal-wise, my dad. Mm. My dad always used to give me tips on, on football, especially as I got older when he used to come to games more. Mm. He would always give me a little experiences and tips on 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 how to play. Like he didn't really play at no level himself, mm -hmm. but he just had the football head. head. Watched football all his life, so yeah, he knows football. 
And then also like people around me, man, mm. like Alex himself, mm. um, obviously my friends like Fabian, mm. um, obviously my brother who was at Academy, mm. people around me who were also in the same mm. circle doing their thing. Mm. You're looking at them and you're trying to achieve yeah. what they're achieving yeah, or try if to not better. So yeah, man. Yeah, so yeah. probably they're, they're probably influences though. Even yourself, man. You and Cedric as well, mm. man. Cedric. Definitely, man. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, man, because it's just like, and I appreciate that as well, because obviously growing up, I had like Teeny and that as my yeah, like yeah, influences yeah. and like to know that man of um Played a position. Yeah, definitely, man. Pardon the pun. <laughs> it's uh, it's all right. Uh, Anytime I, I could get on a man down to the games and that, mm. I would do stuff. Yeah, yeah, hundred. I appreciate when man come to watch and mm -hmm. give my give their little take on how 100%. man played and that. So mm. yeah, definitely. So yeah, give thanks on levels, levels. And Mumsy as well, man. Come she on. took me all the up and I down as well. Stuff. She didn't give me no coaching, but yeah, yeah, she yeah. supported it the whole way through. Stuff. Yeah. So big up Mumsy, same way. Come on, shout out to Marva. <laughs> Don't know. In yourself, fam. In yourself. Um, I think my my big one was my dad. Mm -hmm. Like he he was literally like he he is the reason why I play football. So I have to give thanks to that. And um, my mum was always supporting me throughout. No matter what decision I made, my mum would always support whatever I did. So I appreciate that. Um, but footballing wise. Obviously, Thierry Henry, you can't, you can't, like, for me, he's he's the best for me. Yeah. Because yeah. that's just what I grew up watching. And that's yeah. who, to this day, before a game, I'll watch his, I'll watch yeah. his goals. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. You know, yeah. like, to get in what positions, what, yeah. what, 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 yeah. Did, what would he do? Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. 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 So, but then I, I got free tickets. Like, I used to ball boy. Yeah. When I was 14, nice. sit beside the pitch. So I'd, I'd see it. Like, like, I couldn't get any closer. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Serious. Serious. And then, so, Anelka, the way Anelka used to just chop people, chop and change people, Drogba, like, his presence on the pitch, like, how strong he was and the shit that he could do was just, like, Ridiculous. inhuman. <laughs> inhuman. So I had the pleasure of, like, I've, I've watched so many players. Like, I've watched... Messi, yeah, when he's been at the bridge and and yeah, all sorts of players. So I had like a mix of just watching different players and taking different increments and mm. and learning. Like I'm never gonna play like Drogba. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm yeah. not. I'm not built the same stature. I'm yeah. quick. So yeah. I'd watch players that that would be quick and agile and, and, and agile yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Like your Lucas Moura's and, yeah, and yeah. players like that. So. It's about taking taking bits and pieces. Like you get like a, a Bale, yeah, yeah, who, yeah. Who, when he was at Tottenham, unreal. Like when he played against Inter, that was just unreal, unbelievable. And I remember watching him thinking, it diced up Mykon as well, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, diced and, him up, and finished him, man. finished him. It, it's the players like that where you think like you might not be a messy where you can dribble in and out of players, but say if you knock the ball and you run run past two players, they're gonna be like the hell like yeah, he's rapid course, like course. same difference you yeah, know what i mean yeah, so yeah. for me it was it was stuff like that and then also i wanted to put on for the city like mm. how many how many footballers really like now you've got like your your maguires and mm. your your vardis but at the time there weren't really anyone yeah, coming through yeah. that was from sheffield or yeah, yeah, even yeah. you say you're from sheffield the like Where's, Where's that? that? <laughs> Where's that? Is, is that near Manchester? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, nah, sure. nah, nah. Mm. Like, so it was about like making where I was known from and making sure that people knew like, oh, he's from Sheffield. Like, he's not from around there. I respect that as well because I feel like, I don't know, we say this all the time and I've had these conversations on the pod before when we're saying like, look, we are still the presence. Yeah, 100%. Like, we asked for the presence and that's where I'm from. I always felt like when when I played the Northern teams, mm. I had something that I had to show. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. like 
yeah, I'm from up north. You you had the opportunity. Like I was around this area, but you didn't want nothing. So like <laughs> in the youth cup, scored against Derby. I remember I scored against Liverpool. Minced them up, minced in them. Beat Man United at Old Trafford. So it's like yeah. whenever it was a northern team, it was yeah, it was me, personal. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? More, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. True. All that being said, just ratings from ratings. I think for me, what um. I've learned so far about like just life is endurance. Yep, man. Yeah. Um, for me personally, endurance because it's gonna get hard. It's gonna pause. <laughs> <laughs> um, guy, but... There will be some very very difficult times. Yeah, you get me. Um, as it has been obviously joining release, being at Chelsea, injuries. Bare isms and schisms. Yeah. But I have to rate you because, like I say, you are living out your devotion daily. <laughs> you get me? Daily yeah. devotion, that's what it is. So um, I respect it. And I just want to kind of know what are your kind of, if you had any kind of insights or any mantra, if there was a habit that you would recommend anybody would live by, on any journey of theirs, whether it's sport, whether it's business, entrepreneurship, you know, whatever. Um, what would you say to to them? Really, it's like a life habit or a mantra. Oh, is it, mate? For me, I got it on my arm, tattered. Mm-hmm. You get me? Little Bible verse: "I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me." Mm-hmm. So just that, man. You get me? Faith, if anything. Just have faith. You get me? Mm-hmm. Believe that you can achieve. Mm. Whatever you put your mind to, and work hard, and you'll get there, man. Whatever mm. it is, that's that's what that's what I live by. Still, mm. I think I think mine is that's funny because I've got a tattoo on my arm that says, "Talent is God's gift to you. What you do with it is your gift back to God." Mad, oh, so, no. <laughs> yo, proper. serious gems. So proper. I think what I would say is, no matter what you do, you can't you can't go into it half. Yeah. Um, you, ne- you never see millionaires or or fo- or footballers or anything. You never see the big ones mm. that that are going into it half or mm. doing stupid stupid stuff. Or you always see them fully devoted. And I mm. feel like whatever you put your mind to and you fully devote yourself to it, then you're gonna reap the rewards. But if if you don't if you don't give it your all or you think oh, well, I'll do that, but I'll do this on the side, then that ain't, that ain't going to work. No, I respect it because obviously you obviously embody your own mantra in it. There's nothing worse than having a person say to you, look, um, do X, Y, and Z and don't live by what they say. Obviously, you both have, you get me, um, with the climb back, with your adversities. It's kind of mad that you said that as well. Triple threat. I've got a tattoo on my arm that says, fuel your desires with compassion, devotion, and sincerity. So that would be my life habit for mm. me or anybody else. But for the last time, I wish I could be on that <laughs> team boss. <laughs> you know what I'm like, me, yo, I wish I could be on that team boss. But um, no, this um, chaps, it's... Uh, it's been a special one. Do you know what I mean? Um, and it goes further. There's so much more we could touch upon. Yeah. Even off cam, just cracking jokes about the the um the stories and people just just mashing up. Mashing up. Um but yeah, I just give thanks because I think a lot of people need to hear yeah. what it's like. Um we sit back on telly and watch it and think, oh, it's rosy, that. It's rosy, but it's not all rosy. No, nah, no. Um, but, um, yeah, I give thanks, still. No, nah, uh, thanks for having me on. No, nah, bless yeah. it. Come on, fam. Thanks for me. Bringing me through on a call sign thing, you know? This is so... This is... Tickets for games, lads, all sorting them out then. <laughs> all Listen, when fans are allowed back in. And yeah, no. <laughs> no, it's a joke. That's been a joke as well. Yeah, yeah. It's been a joke as well. I mean, just an aside note, I 
I know if the fans was at the Emirates, Arteta would have been gone, Bridget. I'm still Arteta in store. This guy, who do you support? Bro, I ain't got a teammate. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got a teammate, man. Yeah, yeah, you know it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had to play it safe. That one. <laughs> oh, soon. Yeah, this is chats. Anti. Um, Before we end, can I ask anti, you, power what's no. the number one mental skill would you say is to have as a footballer or going into this uh, sort of field? The number one mental skill that you'd say that you need that. That's important to even make your... I'd say bounce back ability. Mm. Like, even if you have a bad game or you have a, a, a bad few games, it's about being able to bounce back. And if if you ain't got that, you, you can't make it. Wow. If you ain't got that mentality to say that game's gone, it's yeah. about what happens next, next game. game. Yeah, yeah. Then if you're in your head too much in, and you listen to opinions, and press and press and yeah. stuff like that that can affect your game massively and i feel like being able to cut that out is something that is massive you got to massive. Look up with that stuff yeah 100 percent. i'd probably say just touching on that like believing in yourself really mm. believing in yourself man because along the way there were people who won't believe in you mm. you get me won't believe in you. but if you believe in yourself and you put your mind to what you need to do and you believe that you are the best or you can be the best, your goal places still. As long as you're your big your your biggest critic. Yeah. Mm. yeah as right. well as your biggest fan. As, as well, well as your, your biggest, biggest fan. Balance. It's balance. a balance. Like it's about it's about analyzing what you can do better and then working on that. If you don't, if you kind of just go through the motions and you're just like, oh well, he's just saying what he wants and and yeah, no, no, no. It's like you have to be on it. You have to be willing to take criticism from yourself and other mm. people, but not take it personally. Yeah. Because mm. at the end of the day, if you take if you take it personally, it's going to affect you mentally. That's and true. when you're mentally not enjoying the game, that's mm. when everything falls apart. Everything. And even on that, on the flip side, the positive, if you're smashing every game and you're getting applauded every game, every training session, don't believe the hype, man. Mm. Just mm. stay grounded. Mm. Stay grounded still. It's crazy because it your head. My bad. It's it's crazy because I feel like everything that we've said, we've rapped about, and you've said like even that question. It's it's specific to football, mm. but it's almost life synonymous well. with life. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, that was a serious question, not P. Well, um, people, we have to wrap this. Up oh, till the next time. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have a couple. Uh, yeah, man. A couple more conversations, definitely. Yeah, definitely. But Alex, give thanks again, my guy. Thank you. I appreciate Honorable. it. Ken's. Midday. Don't know. Midday. Paris up north. One devotion. Salute. Yo! Zoot, zoot. That's out. Outtakes. I'll keep the outtakes. <laughs> <laughs>